This video is to help you decide which Samsung Galaxy S10 model is right for you. The S10e, the S10, or the S10 Plus. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. Now the Galaxy S10 lineup has been out for a little bit, but I did wanna make this video all about the differences between each of these phones so that you can make sure that you're getting the phone that is right for you. So first off, let's talk about cost. So here with the Galaxy S10e, here in the US, it is $749. Here with the S10, it is $899. And here with the Galaxy S10 Plus, it is $999. Now all of these models do have 128 gig of internal storage as a standard, and they all do have expandable storage in the SIM card tray where you can add up to 512 gigabytes. Now next, on the exterior of the devices, they all do have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack here on the bottom of the phone. They have a USB-C charging port, so if you have a Galaxy S6 or an S7, it will come with a new charger that in the box that you can use with this. And then here you have the speaker grill and a mic down at the bottom. Now all of these do support the stereo speaker. So the speaker down there and the earpiece speaker will both play at the same time. So whenever you're listening to music or movies, you will have a louder sound. Now they all have the option to enhance the sound by turning on Dolby Atmos. So if you go into your quick panel settings, scroll through here and then you will find the Dolby Atmos setting. So you can just tap that to turn it on and then it will increase the volume of the device so you have the best experience possible. Now next, moving on to the left side of the phone, they all have the volume rocker up here at the top and then they do have the Bixby button. So with the Bixby button, you can choose to have it open a specific application or you can actually have it open Bixby. So one tap would open well, Bixby double tap would open a specific app and you can adjust all that in the Bixby settings. Up here at the top, that's your SIM card tray and another microphone. And then here on the right side of the phone, this is where it gets a little bit different. So here on the Galaxy S10e, this is the fingerprint scanner and the power key. So if I want to lock or unlock the phone, I would just press my fingerprint right on there and unlocks the phone or I can press it to lock the device. Now over on the S10 and the S10 Plus, it is just your basic power key, mm -hmm. so you can lock the phone or unlock it with that. The fingerprint is inside the Galaxy S10 and the S10 Plus. It uses an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, so it takes a 3D map of your thumbprint, so when you want to go and unlock it, all you need to do is place your finger right here, and then it will unlock the screen. Now, when you are on the lock screen, it will show you this little area right there. That is the only area in which you can actually unlock with the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. So they all do have the fingerprint scanner, but the S10e has it on the side, not in the screen. Now they do all have the function where if the phone is locked and you want to unlock it, you just double tap the screen and you can swipe to get in the phone right there. So again, double tap, swipe to unlock is available on all of these devices. One more item to address on the exterior of the phone that's unique to the Galaxy S10e is there is no curved display. So if we look at this display, you'll notice that it is a very flat screen right there. But if we go to the S10 here, you can see that it has the curves on the side right there. You can see in the light how it curves on both sides. Now there might be a big debate on whether you do or do not like the curved screen. You can let me know in the comments below. But if you are looking for something that doesn't have the curve, the S10e is definitely the way to go. Um, some people have said it's stronger without the curve, but Samsung has actually increased the glass on these to be Gorilla Glass 6. So it's a much stronger glass um, than you may have had before on your existing Samsung device. So even though there is no curve on the S10e, you still have access to the edge panels. So here you can scroll over and get access to your favorite contacts and favorite applications there on the side. Um, and you have the same over here on the other Galaxy S10 devices. So now that we've talked about all the things that are on the outside of the device, let's talk about the internals of the Galaxy S10. So over here on the S10e, it is the Snapdragon 855, and that is the same on all of these. So they all have the same processor. Even though the S10e is a smaller phone and it doesn't cost as much, it has as much power and speed 
as the S10 Plus. Now next, let's talk about the RAM of the phone. So this is how fast and quickly you can jump around to different applications. So the Galaxy S10e has six gig of RAM. Now the S9 and the S8, S7, every phone before this has only had four gig of RAM. So it did increase to six gig. And then the 10 and the 10 Plus both have eight gig of RAM. And that's on the 128 gig models. So if you do want to purchase a phone that has more internal storage, there are some differences. So on the S10e, if you get the 256 model, you will get eight gig of RAM. On the S10, if you get 512 gig, you still only get eight gig of RAM. But on the S10 plus, if you get 512 gig, still only eight gig of RAM. But if you go with the one terabyte model, on the S10 Plus, it comes with 12 gig of RAM. So if you want that extra RAM, you definitely need to pick up the Galaxy S10 Plus in the highest capacity at one terabyte internal. And then you can also add a 512 gigabyte SD card to increase the storage on there. So if you wanna go big or go home, that's the one for you. Now, a few more things to mention about the security options on the Galaxy S10. One is that Samsung removed the iris scanner from the top of the phone. So this is something we saw on the S8s and S9s, which was a very secure way to unlock your phone with your iris. That has been removed, but in turn, there is a face unlock. So here, if I lock my S10 and I turn it on, there it is looking for my face. And as soon as it sees my face, it will unlock the phone. Now for the fingerprint scanner, I have really enjoyed the fingerprint scanner on the S10 Plus being right there on the front. Now with the S10e, it is really easy to get to the fingerprint scanner just by unlocking the phone or pressing the power key and it unlocks instantly. Now if I wanna use the fingerprint scanner on the S10e, all I need to do is touch the fingerprint and it will unlock it. I didn't even need to press down for it to do that. So that's really up to personal preference on whether you like one or the other. Now let's talk about the size of the phone. So the Galaxy S10e is a 5.8 inch screen. Now that's the same as the S9 or the S8. Now in comparison, here is a Galaxy S6. Um, you know, if you still have one of those or wanted to see what it was like compared to one of those, here you can see it's a very similar size. So we have the height is the same, but there are no bezels here on the top and the bottom of the S10e. You get way more screen um, for the same size of phone. Now, if we check out the width, it's actually less than the Galaxy S6 Edge. So there you go, that's a quick comparison with that. Now the S10, this is a 6.1 inch screen. So the size is pretty comparable to an S9, just slightly taller so you get a little bit more screen real estate. And then on the S10 Plus here, we have the 6.4 inch screen. So in comparison to a Note 9, you have the same screen size on the S10 Plus and the Note 9, but you have less bezels at the top and the bottom of the phone. So just as big a screen with less of a phone, which is pretty cool. So here is a comparison of the current Samsung lineup here with the S10s and the Note 9. Now the main benefit of going with a Note 9 still is it has an S Pen, and I have a video all about what the S Pen can do if you want to watch that. Now with screen size, we also have screen resolution. So with the Galaxy S10e, we have a 2160 by 1080 screen. So a 1080p screen is still a very high quality screen. It is a little bit down from what Samsung usually does on their flagship phones. Now with the S10, we have a 3040 by 1440 resolution. And then here on the S10 Plus, we have the same 3040 by 1440 resolution. So what's the difference there? Well, with a smaller screen, you don't really need as many pixels in the display. You can see that everything still looks super crisp and clear. Now, if we go into the phone display settings here on the S10 and I go to screen resolution, you'll notice that right now it's actually already set at 1080p. So that means that even though this can go to a higher resolution, it is only displaying the same thing as the S10e, and that's going to improve battery life, and so it's not having to process so many pixels at once. Now, by default, many times, these are already set to 1080p to improve your battery, and you actually have to go in and manually adjust to the WQHD+, which will give you that higher resolution. Now, some of the main benefits 
benefits of having the higher resolution display is if you are using Samsung Gear VR, it will automatically adjust to that screen resolution so you have the best experience possible. But really, if you looked close at these, you wouldn't be able to tell a difference. So let me throw up a few examples with my macro lens. So here we have a 1080 screen, and then here we have the 1440 resolution. So that's just really nitpicky on the screen resolution. But if you're not really into the highest quality screen, the S10e is just a fine screen. It's still the dynamic AMOLED screen. So when there is black on the screen, it is just as black as any of the other um, Samsung Galaxy S10 models even though it isn't as high of resolution. Now real quick, I do wanna mention battery life. That's something that everyone always asks me on these phones. Now the battery size of each of these is different. The S10e is 3,100 milliamp hours. The S10 is 3,400 milliamp hours. And the S10 plus is 4,100 milliamp hours. So of course, with a bigger screen size and a bigger phone, Samsung can place a bigger battery in here. Now battery life kind of all depends on how you use your phone. There are so many things that you could do with your phone. Somebody's battery life on the S10 Plus may be worse than the S10e just because they use their phone differently. Now one thing I do wanna mention is that if you go into your quick panel settings and you go here under the power mode, you have a few options. So here you can do high performance, optimize, medium power saving or maximum power saving to increase your battery life. And then here you have an option called adaptive power saving mode. So when you turn that on, it's gonna learn about how you use your phone and it's going to change between these different power modes automatically based on your usage of the phone. So it will improve your battery life over time. So that's something new that Samsung has added with the Galaxy S10s. So that's kind of my take on battery life. If you are experiencing not great battery life, there's a bunch of things that you can do. I will probably make a full video all about how to do that. Now next, let's talk about the cameras on the Galaxy S10 devices. So here, um, you can notice that these wallpapers kind of hide the cameras, but they are in the display. So it's actually a cutout in each of these. So all of the front facing cameras actually are the same except for the S10 Plus. Now all of them are 10 megapixels and they can record in 4K. Over here on the S10 Plus, the extra little camera here is actually a depth sensor. So that's gonna help improve your selfies. So on all of these phones, you do have the live focus option. That's where it's gonna blur the background and keep you in focus. Here is a good example of that. So here you can see we're in focus, but the background has been blurred. So we use live focus here on the S10 and it looks great. So this just adds a little enhanced version of that. I really haven't noticed a difference between the two. So now let's go to the rear camera and let's show you like this. So there are three cameras on the back of the Galaxy S10 and the S10 Plus and only two on the S10e. So each of these phones have a 12 megapixel dual pixel camera. So that's the same camera we've seen on the Samsung phones for quite a while. Now the second camera on each of these is the ultra wide camera. So that means that you can see a lot more in the frame without having to back up or move at all. Now the third camera that is on the S10 and the S10 Plus is the two times optical zoom camera. So you can quickly zoom in on something and it doesn't degrade the quality of the phone. And again, that is a 12 megapixel camera. So those are the differences on the camera. Now here is a quick shot. This is just a normal photo um, from the normal 12 megapixel camera that all of these can take. So in the second photo, this is the ultra wide. So without me moving at all, you can see a lot more in the picture. And now the third shot here is the zoom. So without me moving the phone at all, I was able to see a lot more and I can see a lot more details of this flower. So that one camera is not on the S10e. Now, one more thing that the S10e does not have is the heart rate monitor. So over here on the S10 and the S10 Plus, there is a heart rate monitor and you can take your heart rate in the Samsung Health application, but that is not available on the S10e. Now, most of the Galaxy S phones have had it since the S4. So if you didn't know your phone had that, go and check it out in Samsung Health. Now that we're on the back of the phone, each of these do have wireless charging, so you can place them on a wireless charging pad. They also, all three, have wireless power share. That means if I go into the settings of my phone and I turn on this setting called wireless power share right here, I can then place another Qi enabled device on the back 
and it will wirelessly charge that. So here my Galaxy S6 does support Qi charging and there it can charge that device. So each of these are able to do that. And if you wanna know more details, I have a video all about that as well. You can check out in the playlist at the end of the video. Now you can get each Galaxy S10 in multiple colors. It comes in the prism white, the prism blue, a prism black, as well as a flamingo pink, which is just very bright and vibrant pink. Um, they are available in all those colors. Sometimes it depends on the carrier you do have. Now to wrap this up, let me give you my thoughts on each of these devices and the benefits or what you're missing out on. So with the Galaxy S10e, this is the most compact, but you get so much with the S10e. It costs only $749, so it's a little bit cheaper than the others, but it still is super powerful. You have six gig of RAM built in here. Um, it has the latest processing power. A few of the things that you do miss with this is the in-screen fingerprint scanner and the heart rate monitor on the back, as well as the 1440 resolution, but the 1080p screen still looks great. Now with the S10, you do have the slightly bigger screen that is curved. You do have the in-screen fingerprint scanner and you have the extra camera on the back of the phone with a slightly increased battery. Then with the Galaxy S10 Plus, we add one more camera here at the front, and then we also have the biggest screen, the biggest battery, and we have all those other features that the S10 has as well. So really, um, between these two, it's more of a size comparison and the extra camera on the front. Now with the S10e, it's fully featured. It just doesn't have as big a price tag because you're not getting every single thing that these S10 models have. So that is my comparison of the Galaxy S10 lineup with the S10e, the S10, and the S10 Plus. If you have any further questions about any of these phones, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to see my full video all about what's new with the Galaxy S10, make sure you check out the video over there on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.